Over the long term, value stocks have outperformed growth style stocks. And while financial news headlines and cable TV commentators often try to highlight bursts by growth stocks, an objective look at the largest set of available market data reveals a quite different picture. We're fortunate today to have with us Wes Krill, Senior Investment Director at Dimensional Fund Advisors. Wes, what does Dimensional's research show about the historical data when comparing value-styled stocks as opposed to growth year affair? Yeah, the data is very supportive of value as having higher returns than growth over the long haul. But even before we look at the data, I think it's helpful for people to understand why we believe in value investing in the first place. Value investing is about identifying stocks with low prices relative to fundamentals relative to expected future cash flows. And if you're paying less for an investment, all else being equal, that should be associated with higher expected returns. And that's a very evergreen logic, right? That's not something that changes from one period to the next, where I always expect a lower price investment to have higher returns than a high priced or growth investment. And over the long haul, that's what we see in the data. You know, with a sample period in the US, it goes back more than 90 years. Value has outperformed growth on a calendar year basis by more than four percentage points. And so uh, it's nice to see the data align with the theory. And that gives us confidence that pursuing value stocks or emphasizing value stocks in an asset allocation is a reliable way to pursue higher returns than the market. Sure. And value premiums have often shown up quickly and in large magnitudes. For example, in years when value outperformed growth, the average premium, according to your research team's uh, data, was nearly 15 percent, at least in the double digits. It does show up in bunches. And in fact, we had a really recent example. If we go back to the COVID period, we all remember what was going on in Q1 of 2020. And that was an environment that was not particularly conducive to smaller value stocks. It was really the, the companies that could provide services that we were able to use while at home, you know, streaming on Netflix, buying stuff on Amazon, uh, Googling symptoms for, for COVID. And what we saw after there was some resolution to the COVID environment was starting at the beginning of Q4 in 2020, going through the end of Q1 in 2021, you had the strongest period of outperformance for small value versus large growth in the U.S., since World War II. And this just factors into the importance of discipline when you're pursuing this style of investing, is if you're not there consistently, you won't be there to capture the premiums when they do show up in bunches. Sure. And I think you've done research that shows the average outperformance of value for all years going back to 1927. And it's pretty much it's pretty steady in the mid single digits, correct, for the value premium. We've seen, so I would say the average, like you said, you know, over 4% per year for the calendar years. And I think a helpful observation there is it doesn't seem to be strongly tied to what came in the previous year. I know many investors are going to try and take into account what they've observed from recent value premiums to inform, you know, whether they should have a value tilt in their portfolios. And the data really doesn't support that type of timing of the premium. The average calendar year premium for value coming off of a top quartile year. So if I just rank all calendar year observations coming out of a top quartile year, the subsequent average value premium is remarkably similar similar to the long-term average, as well as the average is conditional on years coming out of a bottom quartile value premium year. So that's just another data point that illustrates the importance of staying focused and staying disciplined and tuning out the noise from prior market returns. Okay. Thank you very much for your time again today, Wes. My pleasure.